Now, many of you know what happened over the last week, and uh, yeah, this is what I'm going to talk about today, which is to understand why a certain somebody shouldn't be uh, threatening a certain person who was doing her job and only that one network had one job for that one person who was working at that one network and had to take the whole 90 seconds of the clip instead of like a 30 second or 20 second part of the clip. Yes. I'm talking about Snoop Dogg threatening Gail King after the 90 seconds part of the interview clip was posted on Twitter. Yeah. Gail King got a lot of death, death threats during that week because of Snoop Dogg making a threat to Gail King. Gail King, out of pocket for that shit. Way out of pocket. What do you gain from that? I swear to God, we the worst. We the fucking worst. We expect more from you, Gail. Don't you hang out with Oprah? Why are y'all attacking us? We your people. You ain't coming after fucking Harvey Weinstein asking them dumbass questions. I get sick of y'all. I want to call you one. Is it okay if I call him one? Funky dog head bitch. How dare you try to tarnish my motherfucking homeboy's reputation, punk motherfucker. Respect the family and back off, bitch, before we come get you. In the last few seconds, he made a threat, just like that, to Gail King. He definitely made a crucial threat to Gail King. And, of course, I had to get it from Twitter because he deleted that video of him making a threat to Gail King. He only kept the apology video, which I happen to screen record before he takes that down too. So, Gail King responded to the backlash that she was getting. Which, which happened on the, on the day that she was actually heading to work. I've been up reading the comment, comments about the interview I did with Lisa Leslie about Kobe Bryant. And I know that if I had only seen the clip that you saw, I'd be extremely angry with me too. I am mortified, I'm embarrassed, and I am very angry. Uh, unbeknownst to me, my network put up a clip from a very wide-ranging interview, um, totally taken out of context, and when you see it that way, it's very jarring. It's jarring to me. I didn't even know anything about it. I started getting calls. What the hell are you doing? Why did you say this? What is happening? I did not know what people are talking about. So I've been told, or I've been advised to say nothing. Just let it go. People will drag you. People will troll you. It'll be over in a couple of days. But that's not good enough for me because I really want people to understand what happened here and, and how I'm feeling about it. I reached out to Lisa because I know that she's a longtime friend of Kobe's to talk about his legacy and their friendship. We had a really wide ranging interview, talked about many things, his career, his passion, his sense of humor, the way he was mentoring other people, how he was starting his next chapter. It was wide ranging. And yes, we talked about that court case because that court case has also come up. 
and I wanted to get Lisa's take on it as a friend who knew him well, what she thought, where that should stand. And I thought she, it was very powerful when she looked me in the eye as a member of the media to say it's time for the media to leave it alone and to back off. During the course of the interview, I asked follow-up questions because I wanted to make sure that her position and perspective were very clear. And at the end, when she said, it's time for, to leave it alone, I, as I said, I thought that was powerful. And I insisted, I insisted that that part be in the interview because I thought that it put a nice button on that part of the conversation. Yeah, see, she wanted the clip that was supposed to be part of the interview. Which is what I'm going to show you right now. The clip that should have been in instead of the 90 seconds part of the clip. Is it even a fair question to talk about it considering he's no longer with us and that it was resolved? Or is it really part of his history? I think that the media should be more respectful um, at this time. It, it's like if you had questions about it, you had many years to ask him that. I don't think it's something that we should keep hanging over his legacy. I mean, he went to it went to trial. Yeah, but the case it was dismissed because the victim in the case refused to testify, so it was dismissed. And I think that that's how we should leave it. Um, when the interview aired, we got a great reaction to it. Um, I talked to Lisa last night. I believe that Lisa was okay with the interview. And I felt really good about the interview. Really good about the interview. So for the network to take the most uh, salacious part when taken out of context and put it up online for people who didn't see the whole interview is very upsetting to me. And that's something I'm going to have to deal with with them. The salacious part that she was referring to is the one that should not have been included in that tweet in the first place on uh, Twitter. It's been said that his legacy is complicated because of the sexual assault charge which was dismissed in 2003, 2004. Is it complicated for you as a woman, as a WNBA player? It's not complicated for me at all. Even if there's a few times that we've been at a club at the same time, Kobe's not the kind of guy who's ever been like, you know, let's go get that girl or tell her or send her this. I have other NBA friends that are like that. Kobe's, he, he was never like that. I just never see, have ever seen him being the kind of person that would be do something to violate a woman or be aggressive in that way. I, that's just not the person that I know. But Lisa, you wouldn't see it though. As his friend, you wouldn't see it. And that's possible. Mm -hmm. I just, it's just, I just don't, I just don't believe that. And I'm not saying things didn't happen. I just don't believe that things didn't happen with force. Now, if that part that she was referring to wasn't in it itself, then, you know, things would have been much more clear. Because this part that I just showed you was taken out of context. The other part when it talks about the media is not. Uh, and we will, there will be a very, uh, intense discussion about that. I also want to say this. I have um, been with Kobe Bryant on many social occasions. Uh, he was very kind and very warm to me, and I felt that we had a friendly relationship. I, too, am mourning his loss, just like everybody else. I still am shocked by it. It's tragic and untimely, and the last thing I would want to do is disparage him at this particular time. And I, I, I hope people understand that. And that's why I'm taking this time to speak to you directly. I've never done one of these before. I didn't even, I, I've never done one of these before, but this was so important to me that I felt I had to say something. I don't want to sit up on a set and read a prepared remark. 
uh, I wanted you to hear exactly where I'm coming from and how I'm feeling. And to let everybody know that no disrespect intended. And now I've got to go to work. Uh, I thank you for listening. When she says that she never does one of these before, she meant she never has done an IGTV video, which is one reason why she wanted to make a statement in an IGTV video for like the first time of her uh, life since Instagram kind of announced it back in 2018, I think. It was, yeah, it was 2018. Because everyone else was starting to get used to IGTV around 2019, a year ago today. And yeah, that's why Gail King wanted to address it for on her IGTV that she said that she never used it before for the first time of her life now in 2020. Now I'm going to bring you up the uh, apology that Snoop Dogg gave here. Tops, what I thought is big Snoop Dogg. Here's a message for the people that need to know. I'm a non-violent person. When I said what I said, I spoke for the people who felt like Gail was very disrespectful towards Kobe Bryant and his family. Well, first of all, Snoop Dogg, it wasn't disrespectful in any way. She has the authority as a journalist to do her job to ask questions. That's how journalism works. They report the news, but also ask the questions. Which is why this person was in an interview that Gail King was interviewing her for. Now with that being said, what I look like wants some harm to come to a 70 year old woman. I was raised way better than that. I didn't want no harm to come to her. I didn't threaten her. All I did was said, check it out. You out of pocket for what you're doing and we watching you. Have a little bit more respect for her. Vanessa her babies, and Kobe Bryant's legacy. But then you said this. Is it okay if I call him one? Funky dog head bitch. How dare you try to tarnish my motherfucking homeboy's reputation, punk motherfucker. Respect the family and back off, bitch, before we come get you. You also called her by name. A name that definitely seems insulting. Which starts as a threat. Like bullying. You were bullying her. In that sense. Not how you did it. Yeah. But anyway. I'm gonna do what I gotta keep doing. Y'all keep doing what y'all doing. We're very non-violent. We just want to say that first and foremost. We speak from the heart. Some of you who have no heart don't understand that. But anyway, carry on and enjoy your day. Do you even hear yourself? Some of you have no heart. Is that what you said? Oh wait, my correction. Some of you who have no heart don't understand that. That's what you said. I corrected this. You said that. By referring to Gail King. You said that because of that interview that you didn't like to, to see in the uh, first 90 seconds seconds which wasn't supposed to be included. There was supposed to be a 40 second part of the clip that was supposed to be included. And you bashed at her because her network was the one to be blamed for all this. 
Her network is the one, not her. If she posted that clip, then yeah, that would be uh, telling a different story. But CBS, CBS, the network of all of all things on television are responsible for not lengthening an entire interview clip. That's why Gail King blames the network for it. And I stand by her side because she only wanted the other clip that I only showed you earlier. I showed you earlier the other clip. If you don't remember just a couple minutes ago, just go back on the video. But I showed you that clip already. I show you the example of that clip that should have been, that should have been included instead of the whole entire clip of it. And that's why CBS made a huge mistake when posting Gail King's interview clip that she only wanted the last 40 seconds, which should have been the first 40 seconds, if the person who posted the social media clip on uh, for the uh, CBS This Morning Twitter account and Instagram account, I assume, was the one that should have been uh, being much more careful of when to, you know, not take things out of context. I don't know who the person who works there is, but he slash she is responsible for not taking the whole clip out of, con uh, out of context. I mean, come on. Don't blame a nearly 70-year-old or 70-year-old woman for, for, like, asking all the tough questions. Blame someone at the network who posted the clip and didn't include just a small partial of the clip. Now, as for you, Snoop Dogg, maybe it'll be best for you to uh, apologize for what you did and maybe Gail King wouldn't have security with her all the time for the next couple of days or so. Because of you making a rant, a rant in the internet about Gail King doing her job and you had to attack her instead of the person, instead of the network who posted the clip that was too much of a length to post as a sneak peek of the interview that was coming a couple of days ago. So, yeah. And as for those who attacked who were attacking Gail King today and still are, please, knock it the fuck off. She didn't do anything wrong. It is not her fault. It is her network's fault. They are to blame for this. So please, stop attacking her online. She doesn't need any more death threats from you. It's time to move on. And that's that. <sighs>